In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a dog clamp like this to hold your workpiece solidly attached to your workbench. So the way that I put this entire dog clamp together was fairly simple. It, it looks a bit more complicated than it really is, but it, it really was quite a simple method. So let me ex explain it in a couple of steps. So the first things in the beginning, or to begin it off with, I basically started using two pieces of scrap wood. This is pieces of pallet wood that I had. Um, I cut two lengths, um, the top one a bit shorter than the bottom one. This is just to give a bit more support where the dowel stick is through the bigger end. And this, I drilled a hole through both of them, put some glue on it and glued it in there. This is quite solid. It's a tight fit, so it won't easily come out. Now on the other end, I basically drilled a hole through the the bottom one the longer one and i uh, hit in a t-nut from the bottom um in my case for the size of my dog clamps i'm using an m6 uh, piece of bolt or threaded rod for for the for the rod part of this so after this was completely done i glued this together put the dial stick in and put the t-nut in i then took a piece of the m6 threaded rod like this I basically only locked two M6 bolts at the top, locked them together with two wrenches so that they stay in place. I then made a knob with uh, my jig. If you want to see how I built the jig, you can look at the description in the, or the link in the description below. So basically this rod then goes through this knob and the hole on top is just drilled a slight bit bigger. So this would be able to be slammed with a hammer in there. So then, Obviously, before you slam it in, you'll put some epoxy glue at the bottom, which is what I've done with the other clamp, and then hit it in with a hammer, and it will then stay put like that, uh, if you hit it all the way in. So, if that's in there, I'm not going to do it for demonstration purposes right now. This then screws into the top of the dog clamp, like this, all the way through. And the part at the bottom that's going to press against your workpiece, I basically took a cutout with the circular saw and on the opposite end I drilled a slight bigger hole in order to put a washer on the inside as well, if you can see that. And it's a very thin layer at the bottom. So this is the part that's going to come on the bottom of the, of the threaded rod like this and this is going to be pushing against your workpiece. Now in order for this bottom piece to swivel slightly like this at the bottom or on the bottom side of your of your workpiece or of your clamp so that if there's a slight bit angle obviously um, as you clamp it the clamp will will angle a bit so that this can move a slight bit without uh, causing a dent somewhere in your workpiece so what I've done is I've taken two nuts once again M6 now the one nut I've only welded the end close and then I rounded it off a slight bit so that it looks like that. Now another option is you can you can buy a cap nut which is already closed in the one end but I didn't have any in stock so I just made this one quickly. So what I then did is or what I then do is I basically put the normal nut on first then the cap nut or the closed end nut. Um, before I do this there's something else that I want to do. From a piece of thin plywood, I cut out a circle as well. This goes onto the threaded rod first. Then I screw on the, the normal nut. After this one, I screw on the one with the closed end or the cap nut. I lock those two together as well with two wrenches. And I then put this piece with the wash on the inside over here. Now, the wash on the inside and the rounded cap nut allows for this to move and this then easily swivels on the end. So once that is in there, I only take some epoxy glue and I glue this thin piece on top of the bigger piece at the bottom here. And this is just so that the whole thing can stay there, it can't fall off and it can move freely any direction that it should. And then, once that is all completely dry and together, it looks basically like this. This is glued together. The top part is done, everything is glued nice and stable. So let's see how well this works. I've got two of them here on hand, so I'm going to put two in the bench like this. I'm going to take a normal piece of wood like this. You can swivel these all around so they fit basically anywhere on your bench, anywhere where there's dog holes. 
or dog holes close by. I'm going to loosen them a slight bit more. Press the dogs into the holes. Um, obviously the holes in the bench is more or less a slight bit bigger only than the dial sticks at the back of your of your bench of your dog clamps. So this is then solidly attached. You know, I'm shaking the whole bench. This is not going anywhere. You can really see this is going there. So you can then either glue stuff together, keep it in place, or you can clamp your workpiece down and then work on it. You can either saw or chisel or whatever needs to be done can be done with this. And these you can see they cannot be lifted out. And once you want to remove it and everything is done or dried, whichever project you did, you only undo the two clamps on top and the dog bench just easily comes out of their holes and your workpiece is once again free. As easy as that.